Hello, welcome to Look East. The headlines tonight. 460 jobs on the line as one of East Anglia... Hello. The recession has dealt another blow to the region's economy with the collapse today of one of East Anglia's biggest hotel and pub companies. The properties are run by Elizabeth Hotels, 27 sites with 460 workers. They're scattered across the region, many in high-profile positions on the high street. This report from our business correspondent, Richard Bond. The pub and hotel trade is having a rough ride in this recession. In the east of England alone, four pubs are closing every week. And today, more evidence of the pressure the sector is under. The collapse into administration of the Elizabeth Hotels chain, which includes 14 hotels and 13 pubs across the region. The portfolio includes the Limes at Needham Market and the King's Head Hotel in Beckles, which employs 25 people. Yes, it is worrying. I've just had a staff meeting with all my staff. Uh, you just missed that. Uh, we've just all been sitting in this room. Uh, for the past three quarters of an hour, going through all the details. My staff are extremely positive. We run the King's Head Hotel, we set the standards, and they will continue to do that. Pubs and hotels had just about come to terms with the smoking ban when the recession hit. With unemployment rising and duties on drinks creeping up, many outlets are struggling. Last week, Green King, based in Bury St Edmunds, reported an 8% drop in sales in its tenanted pubs business. Adnams has also experienced tough trading. We reported at the end of last year a 6% decline in beer volumes. Uh, at the half year we were able to report that uh, that is now 3% growth. The whole UK on trade, pubs, bars, hotels, have had a very difficult year this year for a whole number of reasons, not least because we're, in, we're still in recession. For the 460 staff within Elizabeth Hotels, it's an uncertain time. Customers who've paid deposits for Christmas parties are being told the events should be honoured. Well, Richard's here now. Are they closing? No, not in the short term. The, the administrator will continue to run them as he looks for a buyer, either for individual sites or for the group as a whole. So, is this all about the recession? Is it perhaps to do with the pub trade and hotel trade, or is it to do with this company? I think it's a, it's, it's, we're clearly still in recession. We've been hearing about that today from the Chancellor. Uh, the consumer, I think, is very much under pressure and is thinking twice about going out to eat and drink and splash the cash. And I think the pubs and hotels that are most vulnerable are what you'd call the sort of lower and mid-range uh, venues. And without wishing to be disrespectful to the Elizabeth Group, some of their outlets fall into those categories. Um, those establishments, I think, that are weathering this recession better are pubs and hotels which are perhaps a bit more upmarket and specialise in food and do food really very well. Richard, thank you very much. The Prime Minister has paid tribute to the Suffolk soldier killed in Afghanistan this week. Lance Corporal Adam Drain was the 100th British serviceman to lose his life in the war this year. Today, in his home village near Bury St Edmunds, people spoke warmly of the young man who grew up among them. In a hushed Commons today, tributes to Adam Drain from all political parties. My thoughts, and I know the thoughts of the whole House, will be with his family and friends. The 100th military casualty this year is a very sad milestone. We should honour his memory, we should help his family. Tributes too at his home village of Stanningfield, a village in mourning. Lance Corporal Drain was well known and popular. The 23-year-old from 1st Battalion, the Royal Anglians, got engaged just before leaving for Afghanistan. Everyone knows Adam and everyone feels the loss. And we will always remember Adam with pride and I am honoured to have known him. Adam Drain was shot while on duty at a checkpoint in Helmand Province on Tuesday. This was his second tour in southern Afghanistan. He served there with the Vikings two years ago. He's the 11th Royal Anglian to be killed since the conflict began. When a soldier dies, your first thoughts are with their loved ones. But what is often forgotten is the impact on the wider community. And in this small village, many people knew Adam. They grew up with him. So the impact of his death here has been both profound and shocking. I don't know anyone who, who hasn't been affected by it. It's, it's just one of those things you see constantly on the television, but suddenly it's on our doorstep, and it's of a young man who was a pleasure to know. 
People in Stanningfield say their focus now is to support a family said to be broken by the death of a young man, described as popular, quiet and an intelligent soldier. What will be your abiding memory? The fun. I mean, the guy was just had an aura around him which was just fun and he was a smashing lad, much lost. Adam Drain's friend Neil Thompson ending that report by Alex Dunlop. Well, later in Look East, turmoil at Kettering Town after the poppies come within a whisker of a date with Manchester United. We have all the highlights from last night's sports awards in Newmarket and we're live in Essex as Ollie Mania hits Colchester. Fire crews were called to one of our landmark hotels today after flames were seen shooting from the chimney. The ball in Long Melford is 500 years old. Staff and guests were moved to safety and luckily there wasn't too much damage. Historic Long Melford, a village that was very nearly considerably less historic because the bull, a picture-perfect pub dating back to Tudor times, almost didn't make 2010. As usual this morning, staff lit a fire in the impressive half, but it quickly got a lot hotter than they expected. This picture was sent to us by a viewer, and you can understand why people were worried that a piece of history was in serious danger. Just explain what the problem was with the ch inside of the chimney. Uh, just a build-up, we tend to call it clinker, it's a build-up of resin generally, um, which you can get through either burning a lot of wood or a lot of wood that's, that's not seasoned and has more resin in it to burn. And that resin caught fire? And the res Yeah, the resin can stay to the side of the chimney and then over a period of time it can then ignite, which happened on this case. It was quite a build-up right at the top of the chimney. There is some um, concrete under there anyway. Yeah. But even as firefighters checked for hot spots, the staff showed some bulldog Christmas spirit and made sure the Essex and Suffolk Farm Women's Club still got their lunch. When I heard at 12 o'clock there was all these fire engines outside, I was anticipating fish and chips in the village hall, but they have done wonders, they really have, and they've they put us in and we've had a drink, and ladies love to chatter, so that's been fine. Despite the unwanted drama, the bull wants everyone to know it's still on course for Christmas. Gareth George, BBC Look East. The victim of an arson attack in Essex has been awarded half a million pounds in compensation. Kevin Chappell was left with serious brain injuries and needs 24-hour care following the attack in Harlow in May 2005. His girlfriend, Kerry Youngs, died in the fire. The award from the Criminal Injuries Compensation Authority is the maximum it can make. A company is to investigate exploiting coal reserves off the North Norfolk coast. It hopes to turn coal found deep beneath the North Sea into gas. The gas produced would be used to fuel power stations. Now,